All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Cooking with Bravo. I'm Judy Doherty, and I have two chefette assistants. That's a made-up word. But today, uh, we have Gail Thompson in North Carolina and Ira Rodriguez in San Antonio, Texas. And we have a great... Um, just suggestion for what's for dinner tonight, right? You come home, you've probably had a hard day, the kids are hungry, the family's all like, what are we gonna have? And the first thought is, I don't know what to cook. I don't know what to make for us. And so we're here to help. We wanna help you ditch the drive-through and um, help you eat healthier and um, even less expensive, right? Food has really gone up. Have you noticed that in the grocery stores you go in, everything's jumped up two bucks. You're like, wait, last time it was not 250 a pound, right? So uh, anyhow, so tonight, what I'm gonna start with is making a whole chicken in the microwave. So I'm pretty excited about this. So I will start and then we'll go out and uh, we'll jump into a side dish and some dessert and wrap it up with something to drink, okay? Because it's five o'clock somewhere, right? <laughs> oh, of course it is. All right, so tonight I'm gonna be using our stack cooker and our stack cooker actually has um, many different components to it. But uh, tonight I'm gonna be using what we call the three quart base and the cover. And um, what I've done <clears throat> is I'm taking a chicken so I put on gloves just because as I'm working tonight, I want to be able to switch around um, and do this. But I know at home we don't use uh, plastic gloves, but up here in the kitchen, I want to be able to um, clean up pretty fast. So what I did with this whole chicken, um, I love buying my chickens at Costco. They sell a nice uh, organic uh, chicken in a two pack. So it's always really terrific. So you may check that out if you have a Costco or a place uh, near you. And it is about a four and a half pound chicken. All right, so four and a half pound chicken. I cleaned it out. I um, cleaned it up and I cleaned it out, if you know what I'm talking about. Then I salted it um, and I put pepper on it. So I don't know if you can see there's a little bit of pepper, but that's so wonderful when we're uh, cooking it. <clears throat> now to make a rotisserie chicken, a lot of times what we do is uh, we heat up our oven to 350. We do the chicken and it takes an hour and a half, hour 45 minutes, just depending on the size of it. And that's a long time and that heats up the house, right? And in summer, like we have now with 90, 95 degree weather, nobody wants to turn on their oven and, and add to that heat. So this is gonna be a great alternative to not only heating up the house, but also having you uh, have dinner fast. So tonight I'm gonna to teach you how to do this and never again will you buy a rotisserie chicken at the grocery store because their chickens, they don't use the freshest ones, okay? They use the ones that are about to expire to go off the shelf. So keep that in mind. When you buy your chicken, don't you always look at the date? I do for sure. So you're gonna buy the fresh chicken. The second thing is you're gonna clean it out really good. And you know, in a store, a lot of times they don't do that. So if you're if you're somewhat of a, um, a conscientious eater, I don't wanna say picky because that's not the word, but a conscientious eater, this is going to uh, really make sense to you. Once you've cleaned it, I salt and peppered, that's up to you, that is definitely an option. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to insert in the cavity some things for seasoning. So tonight, um, I have a half of an onion. So you'll notice I just peeled the onion and uh, I have half of that and I'm gonna take and just stick this right into the cavity. The next thing is I had um, celery and you know my celery, I, I use Fridge Smarts and I think Gail's gonna talk about Fridge Smarts in a little bit. If you've never heard and you're like, I don't know what a Fridge Smart is, I'm gonna tell you what, this celery is about three weeks old and it is so firm and so wonderful. So I'm gonna take that and just put that right into the cavity as well. These little plastic gloves are kind of a pain, aren't they? Say yes, <laughs> but they're doing the job. All right, and most of the time I add a carrot. All right, but um, today I did not have any carrots. So we're doing celery and onion, but I did have in my herb garden some fresh parsley. So uh, if you've never tried to grow an herb garden, I just use clay pots. It's on the side of my house. You don't have to have anything fancy. 
you buy it at your um, grocery store, a lot of times they're $4 for the fresh plant, bring it home, put it in a pot. It's, it's unbelievable the taste that you will get from fresh herbs. So this is some fresh parsley and I'm gonna put that in the cavity. <laughs> and then uh, to top it all off, I'm gonna add some rosemary. And the rosemary, my rosemary bush is probably five years old. And that thing grows and grows as big and I have to chop it all the way down and it grows. So it's pretty easy to grow if you've never tried rosemary. And the smell, oh, it's so beautiful. It is so beautiful. So um, put whatever <clears throat> you would like to flavor your chicken in the cavity or you don't have to at all. I just like to do that. You're going to stuff them in and then you're going to take your chicken and you're going to put it in the base of your stack cooker and that's the three quart stack cooker um for the rosemary i'm actually just going to i already washed my herbs okay i did that because of course when we're cooking with bravo we got to be fast here right so i've washed this for you and i'm just going to lay this around the sides i want that the oil and the aroma to kind of infuse the chicken. And then um, that'll just, it'll be so beautiful. Um, and a lovely, lovely taste. Let me put that little piece in there. And there's a little piece of parsley. So, okay, now I can remove this. I wanna show you what this looks like up close. So a rotisserie chicken, you know, the one at the grocery store, they don't do all this fancy stuff. Now, if you call laying rosemary to beside it fancy, okay, it's really not fancy at all. I'm just laying it there. It's going to make it taste so good. Now, what, what I'll do with that is I'm going to cook it. It's about seven to eight minutes per pound. Seven to eight minutes per pound is a really good rule of thumb, okay? <clears throat> the good news is when you're using a microwave to cook, you can always add more time. Right now you can't take it back, but you can always add more. So it, when your chicken cooks, if you pull it out and you're like, nope, it needs a little bit more, you can add that and it's just so easy. Um, so this is gonna go in, like I said, it was just over four, almost four and a half. It was a two pack. So seven to eight minutes per pound, I'm gonna cover it. If I want to, I can add seasoning on top. Like I have my Southwest Chipotle seasoning blend that we talked about last time. And if you don't know what that is, ask your rep um, because it's a seasoning blend. We give you the recipe. It's so wonderful to make. I have the Italian seasoning that would be very lovely on this as well. Um, but basically once you put that onion and I have rosemary and celery, I have parsley in it, that's gonna be so much flavor as it is. I'm gonna cook it in the microwave seven to eight-ish minute, minutes per pound. And then the key, and uh, I know that Gail, you make this all the time too. So you may have a, a trick to it and a tip to it. But for me, what I have found is when the microwave goes off, leave it sit. You gotta have what we call standing time. And standing time is when the microwave shuts off that you don't run over, open it up and throw the chicken on the table. It's where you just leave it sit because the microwaves are gonna continue to cook. And um, what I find is the chicken will get more juicier and juicier and juicier, all right, by that standing time. So once the microwave goes off, leave it sit for a few minutes. Sometimes mine will sit 30 minutes in the microwave. You know, I put it in, hit go and run around, set the table, do everything. And I don't get back to it right away. That's fine. It's going to make it very juicy, but that's all you do for a rotisserie chicken guys. And wait till you see how it comes out. So I'm going to show you the finished product after we go through our demo tonight. And uh, for now, why don't we jump over to North Carolina and um, we're going to watch Gail make a side dish to go with our rotisserie chicken. So Gail, Welcome and thank you and take it away. Okay, hello everybody. And I just love that beauty. Now you're making me hungry. Um, but I love that. We call that walk away cooking because you know, if you have something on the stove, you cannot walk away from it. 
I mean, maybe across the kitchen, but if you walk in the other room and forget it, that's a disaster. So we love walk away cooking. So I'm doing the side dish. So I had to think, ooh, what do I like with chicken? So I am like a roasted rotisserie chicken person and I like potatoes and carrots, just like if I did a roast. So I decided to do them one of my favorite ways. Sometimes I steam them, um, but most favorite ways to do my potatoes and carrots is in our micro grill. And um, this is one of my used all the time products. I mean, I have several, but for cooking, um, we do everything in here. This is a grill and an oven all in one, but you do it in your microwave. So what does that mean? That means it's quicker. Um, and remember a microwave is a moist atmosphere for cooking, like your um, oven is a dry atmosphere. So everything you put in there is gonna come out moist. That's why her chicken is gonna be absolutely moist. Um, and so, and it's quicker. And what? why is cooking quicker better for you? Because you're not gonna cook out all the nutrients, all the colors, all the flavors. So you will be just amazed at the flavors you will get from cooking in your microwave. That's why um, Tupperware has come up and with all these great innovative products for our microwaves. Because we're, like she said, we're on the go. Ditch the drive through If you just write down how much money you would save by um, getting the investing in Tupperware products, you would be amazed. And um, all those additives and preservatives that you don't even know that is going in your food. So our Micropro Grill, non-stick. So you don't need all that grease, the oil, the fats, all of the butters, all of that in there. So it's non-stick. Um, inside in the cover um, and the um, bottom and the cover have susceptors and we call them and they uh, they oh my goodness I forgot that word they attract sorry attract the microwaves reconvert them into a different kind of energy and heat up these two susceptor plates in the top and the bottom to 425 degrees are you ready for it? In 90 seconds. Okay. So what does that mean? That means you have 425 degrees surrounding your food. So whether you're grilling, so I am grilled some, um, I have my grilled chicken in there for dinner after we're done. Um, and so grilling, you would put it in this way. And can you see it's going to go down? It's going to be against both sides of your meat, your vegetables, your, just, um, your grilled cheese. I'm trying to think some other things I grill in here. Um, your hot dogs, your hamburgers, your chicken, your um, pork chops. I grill salmon. So whatever you want to grill, you're going to put it in the grill position. It's going to give that. So you're going to have that hot surface on both sides of what you put in there, which is going to cause that to grill it. So you're going to get a nice um, grilled charred um, texture and flavor on your vegetables. I do vegetables in here, um, meats, all kinds of stuff. And then it's also what I like to call a mini oven. So when you put it this way, it's a casserole or like a mini oven. So you can do um, those uh, little pizzas in here. You can do, um, uh, we did apple pie bubble. Oh, if you missed it, you need to go back and look for that um, video. Um, so you can do desserts in here. You can do um, baked cinnamon rolls. You can do, um, regular rolls, you can, um, leftovers. Oh, things that you would never eat, like French fries. Nobody eats leftover French fries. Oh, when you put them in here and put them on the casserole position, they are just as crispy as when you first make them. Or chicken nugget or leftover pizza. It's like you put it in a pizza oven. So I'm telling you, this is a must have. I have upgraded to having two of them and they're being used constantly. One has chicken in it. One's going to have potatoes and carrots in it.
Um, and so, and I don't know if you notice as I'm waving it around, so sorry about that. It does have metal around it. And some of you are like, oh no, that's not going in the microwave. Well, the thing is, if you look, it has got the silicone on um, the bottom and the top of the metal and it's rounded. So your microwaves don't even realize it's metal. Okay, so, um, and it just makes it very durable and very innovative and you are going to love this. And so I, what I'm going to do is potatoes and carrots. I've chopped some of them up because I know you don't want to sit here and watch me chop them. So you can use, I love to use the little baby potatoes. You can use regular potatoes. You can choose to peel them or not peel them. I like the peelings on them. So, and so all I did with the baby potatoes is I cut them in quarters like this. So I just did the cut across. And, um, you know, with a big potato, you just cut it in, try to get them in even sized pieces so that they're going to cook evenly and you're not going to, um, you know, you want some great big pieces and then some smaller pieces because then some of them are going to be overcooked and some of them are going to be undercooked. So that's all I did was cut up those. I peeled uh, on some carrots. Now you could use the already peeled baby carrots, but I chose to get the carrots and peel them myself because they're cheaper. So um, I like to save money anywhere I can. So, and then all I did was chop that in similar sized chunks of the potatoes. Cause again, I don't want them to um, not cook or cook faster. So I just put them in a bowl. And then um, my easy way is to take your Lipton onion soup mix and um, you're just gonna open the package. And I usually only use about half of it. It all depends on how much you do and um, how flavorful you want it. This is just an easy way to season um, your potatoes and they come out so delicious because you got your onions and you got your seasoning. Of course, you could make your own seasonings. Um, you could put chipotle seasoning on them. You could put Italian seasoning on it. Whatever your favorite, some garlic and salt and pepper. Um, just whatever is your favorite taste. We know we all have our favorites. Um, so that is, um, and then all I do is just mix that all together. And the great thing about our Pro grill, because it does quick cook so quickly. So I'm going to put them in here and I'm going to put them on the grill position. And it's going to take 15 minutes to do the potatoes. So if, um, if I want to, you know, if I need more for a bigger group or if I made too many to fit in there, um, I can do a second batch so quickly. Once it heats up, um, then you can even um, do the time down because when you take the first batch out, it would be at that 425 degrees. Um, so it would be already heated to that point. So and um, so then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna pour these in here and that's not too many because it filled right up my grill. Can you see that? And then I'm going to put it in the grill position. So I want it right down on those potatoes and carrots um, because I want them, you know, I want that grilled potatoes. That's exactly what I'm, I'm wanting is the grilled potatoes. So, um, and it's great. So what I'm going to do tonight, and just, just a little tip, because some of all of us are very, very busy um, on the go, whether you have kids in sports or whether you work outside of the home or whether you just volunteer or whatever you do, is I'm going to do an extra batch while my grill is hot. And um, then what I love to do is take our after it's cooked, so I'm doing extra chicken and extra potatoes, is to take our divided vent and serve, and then I'll put some of the potatoes and carrots on one side, some chicken on the other. I'll put the cover, the seal on it, and it's airtight, liquid tight. And then I can put this in the freezer. So if I'm off doing a Tupperware party or if I'm off um, doing something else and my husband's here to fend for himself, he just takes it out of the freezer. He pops this little vent, throws it in the microwave, um, or I can take it out and put it in the refrigerator during the day so it'll thaw out a little bit. So he just pops it in the microwave and voila, I call these plan overs. Or you ever have those nights where um, you don't feel like cooking? I know nobody else feels that way but me, but I do have those nights or you get home really late. So I just love 
if you're in the kitchen anyway, do an extra batch while you're sitting down and eating the first batch, you can throw that second batch in there while it's still hot. And sometimes what I'll do, let's say I don't have extra chicken, but I have extra potatoes. I'll put the extra potatoes in here, put it in the freezer. And then next time I have ex an extra piece of meat, I can just add that to it and throw it in there. Um, and then you'll have your TV dinners. And what is great about this is you don't have that extra salt or those extra additives to keep it in the freezer as long as they do at the supermarket. So I'm going to, um, I hope I didn't talk too fast. I'm going to put this in the microwave. And um, did you want me to talk about the fridge smarts, Judy? Well, and then I'll come back to you for us to see the finished product. <clears throat> okay. Sound good. So you want me to do the fridge smarts then? Yeah. We'll get it in the microwave, so our 15 minutes. And uh, my microwave is cooking, so if you just joined us, we're glad. That was Gail in North Carolina. She made a potato carrot uh, mixture where she cut it up. Uh, cubed them up and seasoned them with some Lipton onion soup mix. And did you add oil or anything to that? Um, no, ma'am, I do not. I just season it. And, uh, you know, because it does have a little salt in it, it brings the liquid out, you know, so it makes them, gives them just that, it doesn't bring out a lot of liquid, but you can see, I don't know if you can see, it makes them a little moist. So you don't have to add anything. And because this is non-stick, it's not going to stick or anything like that. So they come out just delicious. That's excellent. So we'll go back and see Gail in 15 minutes to see what that looks like. Uh, and by then my chicken should be done as well. So thank you, Gail. Uh, so that gives you a rotisserie chicken in the microwave, 30 minutes. And again, based on seven to eight minutes per pound, <clears throat> seasoned the way you want, and then standing time. While that happens, you could pop in your potatoes and uh, carrots. I love that. And Gail, one of the things that I love to make in my micro grill with chicken is uh, Brussels sprouts. So often I'll buy <clears throat> Brussels sprouts and do them very much the same way. So that gives you an idea that micro -pro grill is just wonderful. But wait. There's more, right? We gotta have some desserts. So we're gonna go out to San Antonio, Texas to Ira Rodriguez. And Ira is actually gonna show us a dessert this evening. So if you just joined us once again, we welcome you. And uh, we're glad you're here and we're glad we will post this recording. So if you missed it or your kids ask you a question, you're like, I needed to know that, you'll be able to go back and watch this recording. So Ira, I wanna welcome and thank you and take it away. Thank you, Judy. Thank you for having me. Hello, everybody. Hopefully, everybody is having a good afternoon. My day started out pretty bad, but it got better. So here I am. Um, and one of the things that with summer coming up, what don't we want to do? We want uh, no time to waste, right? So we want quick, easy, healthy, no drive through. Um, but we need to have dessert. So it's um, summertime is here in Texas, especially San Antonio, and I'm pretty sure Houston too, is getting very humid at night. So what is one of the favorite pastimes during summer? S'mores. Who loves s'mores? Me. Um, so I'm going to show you a quick way to still enjoy your favorite snack, which is a s'more, summertime snack, s'more, without um, being outside in the humidity and getting the fire going. Yes, that's a very good campsite, camping summer memory, but something quick and easy and to calm the kids or your nerves or your sweet tooth is s'mores. And I'm going to go ahead and use the same that Gero is using is a micro pro grill. Who would have thought that you can make s'mores in here, right? S'mores in 90 seconds. Like Gail said, it takes 90 seconds for this to heat up. Um, mine is cool right now because I haven't used it. Um, I'm waiting for Judy or Gail to share their meal with me tonight, uh, but I'll provide the, the snack, right? So this is um, room temperature right now, so I'm able to hold this. Even when it's hot, um, it's still very manageable. You can get from the sides and it's not overbearing. It's not heat overheating. Um, you may be careful with the lid, um, the cover, because sometimes it does get a little hot. Um, but 
quick and easy way to do your s'more is you gotta have graham crackers. So we're gonna take your graham cracker and you just break it in two. So we're gonna make four at a time. So you put your graham cracker as your base, right? And then we need to have chocolate, but not everybody is traditional, right? Because red, white, and blue chocolate. Who likes that? Did I just see Judy's draw? <laughs> draw. So white chocolate, how about that? So we're gonna do two and two, okay? You're just gonna take your chocolate, you're gonna break it in two. You're gonna put this on top of your cracker that you have on the micro grill. And of course, it's to your preference. If you want more chocolate, less chocolate, go for it. This is your s'more. And then, I don't know if you've ever done um, s'mores in the microwave for like just a quick, it just melts the chocolate, right? But what about toasted marshmallows? Of course, we can't get the campfire toast, uh, but we can get very, very close. And we're going to use jumbo marshmallows. So we're just going to stand up the marshmallows. And as you could tell, yes, I love marshmallows. So I don't know if you could see. So you're just going to stand up your s'mores like this. And we're actually gonna use the casserole position. Not the grill, but the casserole. And of course, this is gonna just sit on top, okay? Pop it in the microwave for, sorry, three minutes. And three minutes because it's still cold. So like Gail said, 90 minutes and 90 seconds, sorry. 90 seconds again, so it's really what you need, but just um, something simple, something fun for the kids, um, especially if, if you're hanging out, if you're going to go out to the beach, I um, mean, you have an A or B or um, a rental home, and it's uh, no fire zone, right, no, no um, campsite, you could do that if there's a microwave at the place that you're staying, and you would be the kid's favorite auntie, for sure. Who doesn't want to be the favorite, right? Um, but it's something quick and simple. And what is the best part of, of the gooeyness? That's me. It's the gooeyness because that reminds me of my childhood. That's what grows up. This is you're making memories with your family. You're not just making a snack um, that everybody enjoys. But just think about all the memories that you're going to be making with your family, your friends. Even if you meet somebody on the beach or where you're traveling, just, you know, hey, you know, have you ever done some more than the microwave? And people are going to be like, what? What are you talking about? No. How, how can you do that? Right. Um, and it's something so simple that our micro grill allows us to bake, cook, steam. I know Gail said she does salmon. She does chicken. Now she's doing her vegetables. And you can also do dessert. You know, we can also do cookie. Uh, cake in there. We can uh, do an apple strudel. We can all different kinds um, of different recipes and something very simple. You don't have to fight turning on fire with the air because how many times has ha that happened, right? <laughs> You're all, <laughs> no, I want my fire to get going. So um, I'm going to go ahead and stop this real quick so I can show you. And of course, like Judy also says, once you're um, food is done, you kind of want to leave it in there and let it uh, finish cooking or melting. But I want to show you real quick on the melting. So, and see, it's, it's not that hot. I'm able to hold it. Now, you do want to be careful when you lift because it is going to be gooey. Now, it is messy, but that's good because, like I said, and the good thing about our micro grill is even though it's messy, guess what? At the end of the night, when it cools down, it just scrapes off because it's nonstick. And you just simply hand wash it. You could take just a rag and it's going to come off because it's such nonstick. So 
I want to show you real quick just how it looks. Look at that marshmallow melting, right? And you can see where it's actually getting toasted. If I wanted it more toasted, I could leave that on there. Yes. But now I'm just going to go ahead and finish the product. I'm just going to put the tops to it. You know, and the kids are going to say, you remember when we used to go to Garner, we used to go somewhere and auntie used to make this favorite snack of ours. And when we're putting it back in to seal it, we're going to do the grill position. Now with the grill position, it's already sinking down because of the weight. But we're just going to put it back in there for about a minute. And we're just going to wait on that. So something very simple and unique. Everybody loves. Nobody can say no to s'mores. I love so, Okay, so we'll come back over to you in a second and you can show us the finished product. I um, I would eat that marshmallow in a heartbeat, you guys. <laughs> I mean, that looks so wonderful. That's my favorite part of the s'mores. I'm not a, as much a chocolate person, but that white, gooey, fluffy marshmallow, yum. <laughs> so, so easy to make uh, the um, s'mores and you can do a whole pan or you can just do a uh, part of it like um what did iris say she did four i believe that is fantastic so it's really whatever you think as far as um uh you need for your family so you need something quick and easy then this is the way to do it so are you finished my Ira? do you want us to come back to you uh let me just <laughs> just with anything you know it's messy but oh. <laughs> yeah yum it looks terrific. It's ready, so bon appetit. I'm not gonna eat this, but just wanna show you real quick, um, just the finished product. One, look how- oh my gosh, you got, why would you not eat that? <laughs> I, I'd eat that in a, um, <laughs> in a perfect. Yeah, with the campfire ones, you get it more toasty, but you don't get it this awesome. That's great, good deal. All right, well, thank you. <laughs> okay, so thank you very much, Ira. And um, let me make sure I just um, took her out of the spotlight. And Gail, you'll, you'll tell me whenever yours is done. Um, Ira, I think I still have you on spotlight. I'm sorry, there we go. I think I got it this time. Okay, so here we go, even better. So our chicken is cooking, our whole chicken. Our potatoes and carrots are roasting. Our dessert is ready. Well, what do we need to go with that? A drink. <clears throat> so tonight I wanna show you, let me get that camera just right. Um, our cold brew maker, and our cold brew maker is a cold brew carafe. This is absolutely, I'll tell you, when Tupperware came out with this, I was pretty excited because how many of you go to Starbucks, you get a cold brew and that's five bucks. You go another day, you get a nice tea and it just adds up, it's so expensive. So this is our cold brew maker for cold brew coffee, tea, and you're in uh, fused, <clears throat> excuse me, you're infused either fruit or herbed drinks and waters. I'm so sorry, my voice starts acting up. So there's a couple of different components to it. You have a cover and this just sits on it. Okay, it's a cover. You then have your uh, one and one quarter um, container to make your tea or your water, whatever it is. And then you have your um, um, filter. Now the filter has different lines and I'll bring it closer so you can to see in just a second. There's a one cup and it's a thicker line on it. And then there's the second and cup and then you have a fill line. <clears throat> so let me show you. When we talk about whether you want it weak or strong, it would be based on these lines. So can you see how this line is a little dark right here? Hey, there, maybe that's better. I'm trying to get me out of it, <laughs> but you can see right here, that would be one cup of your tea or coffee. If you want it a little stronger, you would fill it up to two cups. And then this is your water line. And the way you can tell that is there's a water drop on it like a little teardrop, but it's a happy teardrop. So if you like a weaker coffee or tea, you do one cup. 
If you like it a little bit stronger, you fill it up to the line and then you add your water. So basically, you're gonna take your carafe, you're gonna insert your filter, and then you're gonna add your coffee or your tea. So tonight I want a tea because it is summertime, we like that. And this is a ginger peach. Um, I've shared with the um, team before, this is one of my favorite teas. It's, um, it's ginger peach black tea. It's just delicious. So have it in one of our counter states. These are wonderful. These are dry containers. Does have the spoon inside of it that you can use for measurements if you uh, like that. And this is about 19 ounces. If you're wondering how big is that? You can use these for creamers. You can use it for different sugars. If you have some um, different like sweet and low or stevia, something of that sort, a flavored powdered creamer as well. Um, literally anything. I actually, <laughs> I have one at home that has some, um, it's like a Skittle, jelly, jelly bean Skittle type one. So you can literally use it for anything you like. So I'm just gonna take and with tea, you don't have to use as much as your coffee. So I'm gonna use, um, if you can use this scoop or you can use a tablespoon. So I'm gonna put eight of these, which is about four tablespoons, two, three, four, five. I have to count or I'll forget. <laughs> I'll say, what number was I on? There we go. And uh, when you're done, the spoon just snaps right back into the top and then this screws back together and they're fantastic. I, I don't think you can see um, this is my display, but I'll just show you a couple of them that I have here. I have salt, I have coarse pepper in them. Um, I do have uh, cinnamon sugar in one and some flavored coffee. So they're really terrific. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill this up with water to the fill line. I'm going to add my cover and put it on top and I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for 10, 12 hours. Just put it in overnight or all day, one or the other. You don't have to be exact with this. And just like the magic of television, <laughs> 12 hours goes by and voila, look at this. You have your uh, wonderful ginger peach iced tea and look at the color of that so i made this this morning and uh, when i got to the studio and it set all day and it has the uh, ginger peach smells delicious voila. okay so all i will do is pick up the filter kind of drain it and then i actually what i do is i sit it right onto this so it catches the extra liquid when i'm back at a table or a countertop and now your tea is ready to be served. So this is fantastic. You will love your cold brew. Summer, I love iced tea. And the reason you wanna do a cold brew is it's less acidic for you. And for those of you um, <clears throat> that might have somebody with issues or you suffer from a little of uh, acid reflux or something like that, your cold brew coffee, your cold brew tea is going to give you a less acidic uh, drink and it may not bother you as much. So if you've ever had trouble drinking a coffee or tea and you're like, I just can't drink it anymore, try cold brew because it is less acidic. The other thing that I like about it is it's more caffeine. So you do get a little more kick out of this than you might your hot drink. So you'll love that. In the summertime, if you wanted to put some of that rosemary like I had or watermelon or peaches, something like that in your filter and add your cold water and leave that sit, you have a beautiful fruit, fruit water or herb water that is just fantastic. And the key to it is uh, when we're thinking about water in summer is they say, <clears throat> and there's all kinds of rule of thumbs, but I'm gonna say to you, you should drink half of your body weight in water. Okay, half of your body weight in water. So let's pretend, just to keep our numbers easy, that um, you weigh 100 pounds. Okay, I'm just pretending <laughs> we're living in la-la land. 100 pounds, so I would want to drink 50 ounces of water in a day. And that is kind of a rule of thumb of how, how much intake you should have to be healthy with your water. Um, so... Drinking your herb waters makes it so much easier to get down that much water, right? 
So you will love this. It does come in a box. Uh, so if you're trying to think of a gift for somebody, talk to your rep about ordering this because it does come in a very nice gift box, easy to use and fantastic, fantastic product. So I hope you like our cold brew. And um, again, uh, whatever flavor tea or um, coffee you like. There's another one, I, it just popped in my mind that I like, and it's a, um, like a mandarin orange. And uh, I can't remember the brand of it, but I, it's a mandarin orange tea. So it's black tea with a little mandarin. It's so delicious done in the cold brew. So have fun with it, play around, try different flavors. I think you'll very much enjoy that. So I'm gonna grab the um, chicken. I heard my timer go off and I see Gail is ready for us. And then we're gonna pop back over to Ira to just take one last look at the s'more uh, in just a second. But Gail, let's shoot back over to you and take a look at those roasted vegetables. All righty. Oh. Somebody really needs to invent smell of vision because um, this smells amazing. Okay, are we ready for the big reveal? Now, I always take my um, cover. Of course, you always want to open it away from you because I don't know if you can see that steam coming up. And you always want to remember because this was 425 degrees and it's still hot, do not lay it down like this on your countertop. You can lean it either on the edge of the of grill itself, or I will a lot of times lay it on my, um, cause I have a gas stove so I can lay it on my grates on top of the stove. So let me do that. Cause I'm gonna pick this up so you can see it. See the beautiful char on my vegetables. See how it grilled it? Um, and I just took it out probably about a minute ago. Sometimes I'll let it set even longer to get a little bit more char on it, or you could leave it a little bit longer. But let me show you, I want to um, show you, as you can see, how perfectly done those are. My fork went right into it, as well as the carrots. They're not overcooked, they're not mushy, they're just perfect, perfectly the way I want my um, vegetables. So then all I would do is scoop that out on the plate there. Yum. And like I said, this is, this is going to be our dinner. So, and let me show you, I know this wasn't on the agenda, but I did cook my chicken, grilled my chicken um, to go with ours because she did rotisserie chicken, but I had chicken breasts in the freezer. So that's the grilled chicken. And can you see the liquid around the edge? So it's got the little wells around the edge where your excess liquid will go um, to, so you still get that nice grill on that. So then I would just take my piece of chicken And look what's for dinner. That is. And like I said, I cooked extra. So then I would take and um, scoop some of those up in there. Okay. And then I would put my extra piece of chicken in there. And you can put two chicken pieces of chicken, just depending on how much you want to eat. And look at there, I try to do portion control and I will let that cool. Then I'll put this uh, cover on it and my light just went out <laughs> and um, put that right in the freezer. So we'll have, or in the refrigerator for my husband tomorrow because I will be here, I'll be painting. So that is what's for dinner. I love that. Thank you so much, Gail. It looks fantastic. And uh, we'll come back to you for a quick, um, a quick demo on Fridge Smart uh, in just a second. But how many of you were surprised at seeing those vegetables charred on the top, right? 15 minutes in the micro pro grill, no oil, no oil. That's the, the fantastic thing. So um, we have the side dish. Right, I almost said we have the beef, like that commercial, but we have the side dish. Let's take a look, Ira, show us that s'more and um, what is dessert gonna look like for us tonight? Okay, so here is the final product. Oh my gosh, that, I wish you were my neighbor. <laughs> that. Here's, all right, so remember I was talking about cleanup? 
So it kind of reminds me of our childhood when mommy and I think I went overboard. I sh probably should have used the regular marshmallows, but I used the jumbo. So I have a lot. So, you know, like we used to be kids, we could lick the spatula. But the cool thing about it is, even though it's sticking to it, it's non-stick once you once it um, cools down, you'll be I'll be able just to clean the micro pro grill. Love so, it. but marshmallowy. That looks wonderful. Thank you, Ira, so much. Again, that was three minutes. She used a graham cracker. She used a Hershey, either white chocolate or chocolate. She did two of each. She put a marshmallow on top. Did it for, I think she said three minutes, pulled it out at the top of the graham cracker and did another few seconds and voila, you have a s'more. You can make one for that sweet tooth. You know how you're like tearing the place apart for something sweet, or you could make a pan full for, for the family, but they are going to love that. So I appreciate that, Ira. And um, let me show you the chicken and then we'll wrap up uh, this fun just with our uh, fridge smart because I know Gail is excited to show us that. That's always a wonderful thing. This is the current color. So when you talk to your rep about getting a stack cooker, um, this is the new, new color. It is called Peacock and it's absolutely awesome. Again, you get the three quarter. You're gonna get the cone so you can make cakes. Uh, with that, you're also gonna get what we learned last night was the holy piece because <laughs> it's a strainer. And you have the one and three quarter quart and the three quart. So what I used was this one tonight. And the cool, cool thing is you come, uh, you get seals with it. So when you make your chicken, I could just take the cover off, put a seal on it if I wanted to do that. When I'm making bacon or um, hamburger, turkey, any kind of ground meat, I'm gonna use the colander and this, which is fantastic. Um, and anytime I make ground meat, I always do it in my stack cooker first because the elimination of the carcinogens and grease and cookie things that come out of that meat, I'm not consuming. They actually drain to the bottom. The cover is either a cover or it is also another, um, if you turn it upside down, you can use it for cooking and then the cone. So this is our stack cooker. It runs $119, so fantastic. Um, you can host a party and get it as a half off item or free. Um, so talk to your rep about uh, maybe doing a Facebook party or a bingo or something of that sort, or you can outright buy it. Um, you can always join as a personal shopper and get our beautiful 25% off as well. The other thing that kind of complements this is what we call the micro pitcher set. It's a two piece, it runs $29. You have a one cup and a two cup. It actually has the measurements on the side and they're embossed, so they don't wear off. And on the bottom, <clears throat> it has circles. And I know you can't see that from the camera tonight, but they're circles so that when I have this sitting on the countertop, I can see the circles and it, it has a tablespoon or a one and a half tablespoon. So if you need your vanilla or your oil, you don't have to get out another uh, measuring spoon. You can do it right in this and it pours it. Then uh, the one quart or the one cup, excuse me, becomes a copper for it as well. So when you're melting chocolate or you're melting butters and things like that, you can use it and that's fantastic. So that's that, um, but let's get back to our chicken. So I cooked it about seven to eight minutes per pound. I haven't peeked at it. It may need another minute, you never know, but that's a good rule of thumb. And then once the timer went off or the microwave went off, I just left it sit. Oh no, this does not need any extra time. I can tell by looking at it. Um, let me just tell you what I did. I shoved the cavity with a half an onion, celery. Sometimes I do carrot. I just didn't have a carrot today. I did fresh parsley and then I had rosemary. So I laid it around the chicken on the outside. I added no water. Okay, no water. Wait till you guys see this. Okay, I'm gonna because it's still a little warm, but I'm going to take my camera so you can see it like that. What do you think, ladies? Does that look pretty good? See the rosemary, how it's just kind of infused in the chicken. The top is uh, nice, has a nice browning to it. And then let me turn it this way so you can see the cavity. You can see, let me see like that. Is that, that's good, right? You can see where I have the celery and the onion 
in it and so fantastic. So rotisserie chicken, voila, 30 minutes. Think about this, you come home from your crazy day and instead of going to uh, buy in a chicken already made, you can actually just pop one in, go take your clothes off, set the table, get changed into something comfy, come back out and your chicken's gonna be done. So it's kind of falling off the bone. Let me drain it for just a second. Remember, I did not add any water to this either. So drain, drain, drain. There we go. Now, Gail, if you could send me some of those roasted potatoes and carrots over, I would put those on my serving uh, tray. And this is, look at the little wing. It fell right off because it's so done. Guys, this is easy cooking. This is why every Wednesday night, you should join us at 6.30. It's always the same link because we're gonna teach you things to do that are easy and simple and less expensive. My goodness, if you were to buy this rotisserie chicken, you'd probably spend seven, eight, nine, ten dollars $10 on it. But when you do it yourself, it's cleaner, it's healthier. You know what the age of the chicken was that you bought it and you popped it in and you're talking 30 to 40 minutes, again, depending what your timing. So I love that you need a sack cooker or two in your kitchen. And uh, to finish up, let's jump over to Gail and she's gonna show you Fridge Smart and then we'll let you go tonight. And we sure appreciate you joining us, but Gail, show us a little bit about Fridge Smart. Yes, we won't keep you long, but this, these are our Fridge Smarts. And um, we like to share these this time of year because everybody's doing gardens, going to the farmer's market, doing all those things. And what does this do for you is it saves you money because um, how many of you have ever thrown away fruits and vegetables because they go bad so what Tupperware did is they came up with a product that the two things that cause them to go bad quickly and that's excess moisture and so they have these little um I call them little valleys <laughs> on your container where the excess moisture is going to go down there and then you can see your fruits and vegetables will sit on top away from that excess moisture. So they're not gonna rot. You, you ever open a bag and they're rotted in there because that moisture, it sits in that excess moisture. And the other thing is that our vegetables breathe, but they breathe on different levels. So what Tupperware did was they came up with a venting system. So you have, you can see the chart on the front and the great thing about the chart is it's not a sticker. So it's in between the plastic. So it's never gonna rub off or wash off if you put them in the dishwasher it's always going to be there so you have your medium breathers your low breathers and your high breathers and then when you put this little um tupperware towards that um lay or that chart then that's going to line up so if i've got um, broccoli in here then i'm going to push it all the way to that side and what that's going to do is broccoli is one of those vegetables that likes lots of air because it gives off gases so if you don't give it air it's going to get bad quickly so you're going to give it lots of air it's going to be happy it's going to last a lot longer did they say your fruits and vegetables last two to three times longer so and if it were carrots like i have in uh, the medium shallow which is where i have my carrots in there see they fit carrots and celery um asparagus, things like that are great in there. Your zucchini, your yellow squash. a very very long time because they're not getting the excess air like when you put them in that crisper drawer so um and they do come into this is the set and um our four piece set and you get a medium deep which is great you can see i have my spinach i just bought today in there so um it holds a, a good size container of spinach and then of course a 
that size for carrots. And then this is great for strawberries and mushrooms and all those different things, lemons, limes, all those things. And talk to your consultant because if you do fruits and vegetables, talk to the person who invited you because you're going to want to know why you want to get these right now. That's right, so. thank you, Dale. And uh, probably want two sets, right? How many? How many of us yeah. are two sets plus? So, um, guys, I highly recommend that. And um, I know that uh, I just used something. Oh, I had iceberg lettuce that I pulled out, and I was like. What, what how old is this and i started thinking this iceberg lettuce is six weeks old and i was still able to continue using it so the fridge smart really does work so on behalf of ira in san antonio tonight and uh we have gail thompson in north carolina and i'm judy i'm in houston texas or a suburb called spring texas but we thank you and we're so glad your rep sent us uh sent you to us so you could see how to make a rotisserie chicken in 30 minutes serve it with some potatoes and carrots that were roasted in 15 minutes with a yummy s'more and a glass of iced tea. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. And um, we hope to catch you on the next Cooking with Bravo.